Hey everybody, for today's video, I don't have a tier list for you, but I promise there will be a sort of ranking at the end of it, and that's going to be for the alignment options in the game. Alignment is probably the biggest single mechanic to determining how your run is going to go over anything else, because what heroes you're going to be playing with will be based off of what alignment you're choosing to play with. Today I'm going to cover the different strengths and weaknesses the pros and cons for all of the different alignment combinations, and I'll even be discussing sort of the differences between the different halves. So, you know, Old Faith versus Christian and Tyrant versus Rightful. There are some major thematic differences between the two that may help you decide what starting point you want to look at, which half you really want to be focusing on when picking then which quadrant to go from. I won't be spending a whole lot of time on it, because it's not really the biggest thing, it's sort of broad strokes, but it is worth going into a little bit. When I get to the ranking at the end, I'll go a little more into detail about how I'm going to be determining the ranking. So, for now, I think that covers everything we're going to be going into. Let's go ahead and get started. Alright, before we go into the specific quadrants you may choose for your run, let's start with the big picture. Beginning with the religious axis of Old Faith versus Christian. What's really the difference? What can you sort of expect when you're picking one of the two options from either side? Well, I won't go into the specific upgrades. That'll come when we're looking at the individual combinations. So, really, the main difference is hero selection. And thematically, what are the differences? The main thematic difference between the two religion options is the classes. Old Faith is going to have pretty much all of the Arcanists, bar one. Now, looking at this chart, you'll see there may only be two Arcanists here, Morgana and Dagonet, but there are two additional Arcanists you recruit through the story, Merlin and Fairy Knight. If you are really into magic, and you want your team to have magic users, and you want to be able to have some variety and some options to pick from, Old Faith is really going to be where you're going to want to look. With Christian, they really only have Ector, so there's nothing wrong with Ector, but if you want to have magic options, Old Faith is where you want to be focusing your attention. Now what does Christian have in contrast then to that? Looking at the hero options over here. Well, unfortunately there is no Christian counterpart to the Merlin choice. That's another Old Faith choice. I'll kind of focus more on her when I get to Tyrant. But when you're choosing from Fairy Knight, the opposite is Gawain. He isn't Christian, but if you're looking for the loyalty bonuses, he's the one you're going to want to pick rather than Fairy Knight. And he is a defender, a heavy armor user. On top of that, you also get Percival through the story, and he is a Christian defender. So that means you have two additional defenders, plus Galahad here, so that's three defender options. And also the White Knight, a champion. So that's four heavy armor users. The Christian side really focuses on what I'd probably call Crusaders or Questing Grail Knights. Lots of heavy armor, big tough units that can take a lot of hits and get up in melee and mess up your enemy's front line. If you're looking for a lot of hero options when it comes to heavy armor users and frontliners, Christian is probably where you're going to want to focus as opposed to Old Faith. Now for the other split, Rightful versus Tyrant. Now there is a bit of a class difference between these two halves, but I prefer to look at it more through the role difference. If you're looking at what you will unlock through the Rightful side, that is going to be Leo, Lucan, Lady Guinevere, who is not listed here, but she is also a sage like these two, and then Lancelot. Three of them are sages, so there is a bit of a class difference, as Tyrant does not get any sages in the same comparative type of number, but Lancelot is not a sage. He's a champion, but he does have a toolkit very similar to sages, and that is support. They have either Inspire or Bless, things like Ice Wall for some battlefield manipulation, Globe of Protection. Rightful focuses on buffing the party. 
when it boils down to it. That is what Rightful is strong with. In comparison, Tyrant focuses really on debuffing the enemy. You have heroes here like Black Knight, who's just a much more straightforward champion, focuses on damage dealing, but he does also have Blood Hex if you want to run that on him. You have the Red Knight, who is probably the highest damage dealing defender, and he focuses on things like bleeds and knockdowns, debuff status effects. Dagonet, who is an Arcanist, so he is going to have plenty of hexes to debuff them. And Morgos, the counterpart to Merlin, who you recruit through the story. She is a sage, but she has no buffing capability whatsoever and plays much more similarly to an Arcanist. She is Tyrant Old Faith, so she very much fits in this Tyrant half. Even Sir Domus has a pretty debuffing-oriented toolkit with his Marksman skill tree. So that really sums it up. Old Faith versus Christian is magic users versus heavy armor users. Rightful versus Tyrant is buffing support versus debuffing support. Depending on which of these sounds most appealing to you, that's probably the half of this alignment tree you're going to be looking at. And you may have heard, you know, the cross-section of these I've listed already and figured out where you're going to want to go with it, but let's go ahead and jump into the specific alignment combinations and really go into what each of them has to offer. Now, a while back, I actually did a poll on Reddit asking all of the players on there what their favorite alignment was or what was the alignment they did for their first run if they're still on their first run. And the most popular option was Old Faith Rightful by a pretty noticeable margin too. So that seems like a pretty good spot to start with. What is it that Old Faith Rightful has that makes it such a strong alignment and maybe the one for you? And I think more than anything, it probably has the best hero selection, which makes it very welcoming for a player's first run. If you look at what you have available to you, you have Lancelot, a champion, Leo, a sage, Bedivere, a vanguard, Morgana, an arcanist, and Geraint, a marksman. The only thing missing here is a defender. And between all of them, you have buffing support through Lancelot and Leo, as well as Guinevere, who you can recruit through the story. And in debuffing, you have Morgana or Merlin, or even Morgos, though she does conflict Tyrant against the Rightful. She is still usable. So you have three spellcasters with strong debuffing. Geraint, as a marksman, even has debuffing. And then... Bedivere as a vanguard, he does have some debuffing potential, but it's not great. As a vanguard, he provides good damage capability. Lancelot, also good damage capability. It's just a very good selection. You have damage, you have a heavy armor user, you have buffing support, debuffing support, range, melee. Anything you may want to make any kind of team, it really is here and offered to you. It's a very good selection. Now, if that is enough to sell you, it does have some really strong passives that you unlock. The first ones being Ancient Method, Extra Relic Dust, which means you can buy extra relics from the tower, and Medicines, extra healing to your vitality from the free treatment in the hospice. Especially on higher difficulties early on, that's very useful. The decrees you get of Reforge Armor is just 10% damage reduction for the next mission. That's quite strong. And Old Faith Ritual. The hospice and cathedral treatments finish one mission faster, so you can just cycle your heroes through the uh, facilities much quicker, and if you have a super important hero, you can get them back in action, maybe by the very next mission, without needing to pay for it. With the laws, heroes train 50% faster in the training ground. This one probably is one of the weaker ones, but by the stage of the game where you unlock this, most of your heroes are pretty high and you don't really need the training ground, but it is a good catch-up mechanic. Finally, with restocking, again, later in the game, the stage you'll be reaching this, being able to cycle the merchant faster is actually very useful for trying to find those relics to perfect your build. On top of that, you get extra XP from events, so sending your heroes to get loyalty, they can also get a good chunk of XP. Stalwart, extra resistance to annoying effects that come through mental debuff, like stun. And arcane. This one is not great, admittedly. You'll save some golden resources on upgrading the Enchanted Tower. Not really a huge deal. Now moving on to the antithesis, we have Tyrant Christian. 
And it's opposite in more ways than one. That poll I mentioned earlier, it came in dead last by a huge amount. It got less than like 10 votes where the next one up in third place got around 30. This is not a popular option, and we'll kind of get into why. Starting with the hero selection like last time, in comparison, Tyrant Christian probably has the narrowest and least varied hero options. And obviously, not just a first-time player, but players in general, they like to have options. They like to have variety, different things they can choose from for any sort of team comp they may want to make. And as we look at the Tyrant Christian characters, we have Galahad, White Knight, Red Knight, and Black Knight. That's two defenders and two champions. It's a lot of repetition. So you can definitely understand why some players would rather go with something else where it doesn't have four heroes with two classes. And then, you have, of course, you have Domus, who's a marksman. He's different, but as I've kind of talked about in a lot of my other videos, marksmen right now are not great, so he's not really much of a selling point. Now, I do think Tyrant Christian has access to some of the strongest heroes in the entire game, just still the smallest selection of variety. Now, if you know what you're doing and you're on, you know, your th second, third, or fourth run, you may realize this alignment uh, combination has some of the strongest heroes in the game, so it may not bother you. But before that, there really just doesn't seem to be much incentive to pick this. And that's definitely a huge downside, is very little variety. Beyond that, though, let's go ahead and look at some of the passive upgrades you get along the way. The first ones being... Trading levies for the merchant, buying cost is reduced by 10%, and healing friars. Treating injuries will take one less mission. Now, both of these are decent, but they fall off. Both are very strong in the early game. In the early game, you're not going to have a whole lot of gold lying around, so being able to get any sort of discount is a big deal, and being able to potentially heal someone's injuries in the cathedral for free versus having to pay for it, also a big deal. But as you move further into the game and you become more rich in gold, these price tags become less of a concern for you, a 10% discount becomes more inconsequential, and you're more willing to just pay the gold, and the difference isn't really going to be something you notice a whole lot. They still have their use, but I feel players will just sort of start to feel their impact less and less. Moving on to the laws you unlock, with extra yield, you get 10% more gold from missions. So, sort of on theme, being able to get more gold later on, this can actually have some usefulness because there are some times where players, especially if they become really rich, they'll start buying relics, even if they don't want them from the merchant, just to turn them into dust in the tower so they can get more of the relics that they like from the tower. This one is a little more niche, admittedly, but not really bad by any means. And then here, heroes regain vitality 50% faster in the hospice. This is a very useful one. By that stage of the game, you probably may just be fine clicking and paying for it, but this can save you gold. Lots of gold manipulation on this. With the decrees, concession, merchant prices are discounted by 20%, but the arrival of new goods are delayed by two missions. So if there's stuff you really like in the merchant, but maybe you don't have quite enough gold for it, this can be useful. But later on in the game, as i noticing a theme here, generally, gold not an issue, and you kind of want gear to be cycling as quickly as possible. And then Purse of Gold, you gain plus one loyalty for all heroes, and plus one extra loyalty if they have a negative loyalty value. So if they have a minus two, they'll go up to zero. If they have a minus one, they'll go up to one, and then zero and up, they just gain one. So, this is a little bit of a saving grace to maybe try and get some of those other heroes like Merlin, who normally is Old Faith only, to a decent loyalty so you can use him with this alignment. It does cost a fair amount of gold, but thankfully, with all these other benefits, they do kind of synergize into this a bit and will help ensure that you have gold to spend on this decree. The last upgrades, Lordly Bounty, another 10% gold from missions, Scourger, Upgrades for the Cathedral, cost 20% less, just another building one, fairly inconsequential. And Unyielding, 20% physical debuff resist. So if you're looking for an alignment that has 
very powerful heavy armor users, but really not much in the way of magic, this will actually be a very strong alignment choice for you. It has plenty of gold bonuses, so you can be even more free spending, and you can get access to Morgoth. She will have no buffing capability of like a proper sage, but very strong debuffing, and she's, I still think, one of the strongest heroes in the game. You have the selection of very, very powerful heroes in this combination, just a very narrow selection. So if you really like choice, this is not the one to go. If you just want to use characters that are very strong, then honestly, I think you'll be fine with this combination. Moving on to Rightful Christian. This is sort of similar to Tyrant Christian in some ways, where not a lot of magic, as I sort of discussed in the beginning. Old Faith really holds all of the magic. But even less so, because now you don't really have Ector. His loyalty will be okay, because he's still Christian, but nothing great. With this combination, you're really focusing on your melee options. Looking at what you have offered to you, you have two sages with Lucan and Leo, a defender with Galahad, and then also Percival, who I forgot to mention with the last combination, and then White Knight and Lancelot as your champions. So, all melee, but lots of very powerful buffing support. And that's what this combination has going for it better than any of the others. If you want to run a team capable of just running and stacking multiple buffs, multiple inspires, multiple blesses, this is the one for you. You'll be able to just throw on so many bonus effects to your own party to then just march out into melee and just up close and personal butcher anyone that comes at you. This is a really good option for you. Going into the upgrades, as we covered with medicines already and healing friars, so don't really need to do a whole lot of depth here. Both decent options. Covered both of the laws. There's just a theme of quick recovery, basically, within this quadrant. Very quick recovery for your heroes, and then also the merchant restocks faster. One of the strongest assets of this alignment, however, is the decrees. Namely, Joust. Using the Joust Decree fast-forwards the timer by one, so if you had a bunch of heroes in the training ground that were going to level up after one week, or the merchant is one week away from restocking, or you have a bunch of heroes that need to sit out for one mission to be healed up, you use Joust, boom, they're all done. This is probably the strongest decree in the game. The second decree, plus 10% damage to all heroes for the next battle. Also a very powerful one, just extra damage is always going to be very, very useful. For the other passive upgrades though, we have Authority. Decrees can be used one mission sooner, which is useful, self-synergizes with Joust. Scholar, plus one skill point for rightful or Christian heroes, so just extra skills for all of your heroes, very, very good. And Masonry, all building upgrades cost 10 per minus 10% building resources. This is much better than the 20%, I think, for a specific building, because you'll just get a lot more mileage out of this. All of the passives here in this quadrant, very strong. If you're looking for an alignment combination that has a very strong selection of heavy, tanky heroes that can do a lot of good damage in melee, this is probably going to be the option you're going to pick up. And finally, we have Tyrant Old Faith. As usual, let's start with the hero selection. You have Morgana, Bedivere, Black Knight, Red Knight, and Dagonet. Additionally, there is Merlin, who is for all of the Old Faith options, or Morgoth, who is also specifically Tyrant Old Faith, so she fits in perfectly within this category. That means you have two or three Arcanists, and I mean, as I've mentioned before, I basically count Morgoth as an Arcanist, so no matter what, you kind of have three Arcanists available to you, specific to this alignment category. Furthermore, you have a Defender, a Champion, and a Vanguard. So you have a very good spread of class options for this alignment combination. All of them are very offensively oriented. Black Knight being a Champion, 
and with leap attack has high mobility compared to the other champions so he's very aggressive red knight the highest damage dealing defender so a very aggressive defender you have dagonet and morgana or merlin who are very powerful arcanists probably the three strongest in the game all with phenomenal debuffing capability, Merlin probably having the highest straightforward damage capability of the three as well, and Morgoth, who's probably the strongest debuffer in the game, with only Dagonet probably being in contention with her. So you have a very aggressive damage-oriented and debuff-oriented alignment combination here. If that appeals to you, this is probably what you're going to go with. But let's go ahead and get into the upgrades. As we covered before, Ancient Method, very solid for that Relic Dust, useful for the entire campaign. And Trading Levies, fairly useful, nothing crazy, but you know maybe feels less useful the farther on you get into the campaign. The laws we've covered, extra training ground experience, and more gold from missions. With the Decrees though, you have restock goods, so you can immediately restock the merchant which is very helpful especially as you get into the later game and you're really looking for some specific types of relics and wartime levies plus five thousand gold minus one loyalty to all heroes but honestly most of the heroes you're running will probably have a little bit of excess loyalty so you can definitely use this a couple times and still keep them within that faithful bracket of their loyalty meter and that means you're getting at ten thousand fifteen thousand gold you're going to be rolling in it it's just, this is a very powerful levy with the other three upgrades with haggler an additional 10 percent reduction to merchant cost so the 20 percent becomes a bit more significant and synergizes with the wartime levy and the extra yield law some good gold synergy going on here and vanquisher it's just an extra two loyalty to Tyrant and Old Faith, which synergizes with the wartime levies. So this pretty much just guarantees an extra use or two out of this decree. And finally, Relic Smasher, plus 20% Relic Dust gained from sacrificing items. So this alignment is probably the most set up for buying stuff from the shops, whether it be the tower and the extra dust you're getting or the merchant and being able to cycle their stock on demand and the extra gold you'll have for it too. So if you really like being able to manipulate the stores to try and get some extra gear, also something to keep in mind if you want to try and pick this alignment choice. Overall, Tyrant Old Faith is a very powerful alignment if you're looking for something focused on damage and debuffing while still having a good array of options between melee and spellcasting. But how do they really compare to one another? What do I think are the stronger options, and which do I think are the weaker options? My ranking is mostly going to be dependent on three things, really, and it's completely arbitrary. <laughs> One, just how strong do I think the alignment is mechanically? What does it offer to the player? Two, just how fun do I think it is? This is entirely personal opinion, so if you disagree with me, then... You know, that's not really surprising. And three, how do I think it really will appeal or assist a new player? In first place, I think I'm going to give it to the Tyrant Old Faith alignment. And there's mm, possibly a little bit of bias here. But mechanically, with how I like to play the game, I think it is the strongest of the alignment combinations. The heroes you get access to... Merlin, Morgos, Morgana, Dagonet, Black Knight, all of these are amongst the strongest heroes in the entire game, I think. And you still have access to a good selection of Arcanists, too, so there's good variety. You don't really get much in the way of Sages, but I'll kind of get to that in a little bit. This is definitely very subjective to what's the mechanically strongest, just with the playstyle I like, I think debuffing is stronger than buffing, so while there isn't much in the way of buffing, they absolutely are probably the strongest alignment combination when it comes to debuffing. So mechanically, I do think it is a bit stronger. In terms of personal enjoyment, I just think it's also the most fun. And that may be why it's in first. But it's, for me, the most fun. 
you have a lot of different Arcanists to play with, and I think Arcanists are probably some of the most fun you can have in the game when it comes to playing a class. You have Black Knight with his leap attack. That's just super fun and satisfying. I like the Red Knight. He's really cool. And yeah, just I like the playstyle of this alignment, as I mentioned. I like debuffing. That's usually what I try to go for when I play these kinds of games. And then I don't think it's the best in terms of a new player perspective, but I still think it's really high up there. You have a good variety of heroes. A champion, a defender, a vanguard, two arcanists, and then a sage, kind of, in the form of Morgoth. So still a good variety. I think picking this on a very first run, you'll still get to experience a good portion of what the game has to offer. Second place, I'm going to give it to the opposite, Rightful Christian. Now, for point one mechanically... It's just a very, very strong theme that it has going for it. It's fairly narrow, but it does it so well. You can stack so many buffs and just so many bonuses to your party, and you'll just start mowing through your enemies that this alignment is just undoubtedly extremely powerful. And I don't think it's quite as strong as, you know, what I put in first, obviously, because I think Arcanists are a bit stronger than the stacking of buffs and bonuses type of gameplay, but it's definitely a contender for sure. Fun-wise, it's just fun too. Being able to march in there with a group of nigh-invincible warriors just march into melee and just start swinging away at things, it's a very fun playstyle. This is definitely, I think, I don't know if it's outright my second favorite alignment to play, it's, it's probably a tie, but it's it's definitely up there. And new player experience, I don't think it's the best. It's not the worst. But you do get a good selection of sages, champions, and defenders. And even marksmen, really, if you include Dindrain. So it's certainly not bad in that regard. I don't think it's quite as good as the first place one or the one that's about to follow it up, but I think it compensates for with mechanical strength and just fun factor. Third is Old Faith Rightful, and mechanically, it's a very strong class, and this strength comes from its variety. You have the ability to make pretty much any type of team you want to make, and that's a huge strength to it, but at the same time, I think it's also a little bit of a weakness. It sort of has that jack-of-all-trades, master-of-none kind of vibe to me. You can make very strong teams, don't get me wrong, but I don't think it'll have the same sort of debuffing type of capability that, you know, that'll excel in, like, Old Faith Tyrant. You can have some good buffing, but it won't quite be the same as, you know, Rightful Christian. It would be somewhere kind of in between, which is still very strong, but not quite as strong in the battlefield result-wise compared to the previous two alignment combinations. Fun factor, I do think it's really fun. This one is a close tie between Rightful Christian for me, because you do get the spellcasters, you do get more of them with, you know, Merlin, Morgana, and Fairy Knight, but I, for me, I just never really fully ditch that Jack of All Trades kind of feeling. I like having a sort of feeling of my team is specialized in this sort of gameplay style, so for me, it kind of detracts a little bit, but the spellcasting at the same time bounces it out. For new player experience, hands down the best. If you're only going to do one run, this is probably the alignment combination you're going to want to do. I think a new player will experience the most that the game has to offer with this alignment combination. Unfortunately, I just don't think this is enough to boost it up over the other two, because for me, I'm leaning more towards a player is probably going to play this more than one time to experience some of the other alignments. Now, sadly, in last place, I don't think this was going to surprise anyone, is Tyrant Christian. And honestly, mechanically, it is extremely powerful. It has very strong buffing capability, not as strong as a rightful team, but still strong in the form of, you know, Galahad or Percival, and also strong debuffing capability in the form of, you know, Morgoth, if you choose to bring her in, and Ector. But again, not quite as strong as if you go Old Faith. In the pure damage category, I mean, you have White Knight, Red Knight, Black Knight, all very good for that. So it's, it has one of the higher, d just, you know, damage orientation for it mechanically. It's just kind of like 
Old Faith Rightful, it's not quite as strong, I think, as some of the other combinations, even if it has some of the best heroes in the game to pick from. So it's really hard to place it mechanically. It has really good hero choices, but at the same time, it doesn't quite feel like it's as strong as some of its peers in terms of the gameplay style it's focusing on. Fun factor, it's pretty low. I mean, I personally enjoy it, but compared to the others, you just never really ditch that feeling of, I feel like this is the only team I can run because my options are so sparse. You almost feel like, even though your team is strong, you were kind of forced into picking this team. And a lot of players aren't going to have fun feeling like, I need to run this team because it's the only viable one for this alignment. It's honestly a pretty big drag on it. And for new player experience, dead last easily. I mean, clearly. It has four alignment heroes from the tree and two classes between them. You're not going to experience a whole lot of the game, I think, on your first run going with this alignment. I don't recommend it for a new player or for their first run. You're definitely better off going with something else. And that brings this video to a close. This is probably going to be one of my longer videos for sure. I hope I was able to keep it as brief yet concise as possible. You're able to, you know, kind of understand my reasoning for all the different things. Go ahead and let me know what your ranking would be for uh, the different alignment combinations. Curious to know how many people agree or disagree. But this has been going long enough. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you in the next one.